Thanks. Uh, thank you very much for coming. Uh, it really means a lot to us. Uh, my name is Olivier Lamar. I'm the Captain or Mars Rover Project Manager of the McGill Robotics Team at McGill University in Canada. And today we're here to showcase you our newest rover, Boomi, who, uh, which competed in the previous edition of the University Rover Challenge and the European Rover Challenge, which happened uh, about two and a half weeks ago. So just to put you in the context, McGill Robotics is McGill University's largest engineering design team. Uh, we're more than two, we were more than 200 members at the beginning of last year. So that's a lot of people to manage. Uh, we have multiple projects. Uh, we have, oops, yeah. Uh, just before jumping to the projects, uh, uh, our team at McGill University uh, is based on this, on this fundamental model, which is team before machine, which basically uh, prioritizes team bonding and team activities in order to have a healthy and strong machine uh, when we go to competition. The team itself is structured uh, into three projects and the business team, uh, like it's shown here. We have, first of all, the AUV project or the autonomous underwater vehicle project, uh, which competes in the San Diego competition. We also have the drone project. It's a, basically an autonomous drone uh, which can perform a set of tasks, uh, either semi-autonomously or fully autonomously. And of course, we have the Mars rover, which uh, I think interests everyone here in the audience today. And this is the one we're going to talk about a bit more in depth. And in the end, we have the business team uh, who brings together all of our finances, our budgeting, our sponsorship, because our team basically relies on the, on the support of external sponsors. Otherwise, uh, we wouldn't be a, able to sustain our projects. So, yeah. Good? Yeah. And one last function of the business team is to also perform outreach and get in touch with the school boards of the Montreal area to inspire younger students into pursuing a career in, in science or technology and ultimately maybe to design robots and uh, come and have fun with us. The main competition we decided to go to, and we were looking at it for a while, was the University Rover Challenge, which happens uh, once a year at the Mars Desert Research Station in, uh, in Utah. And uh, I think Mr. Kevin Sloan, who is the URC director, will talk to you a bit more in depth about this competition. But it's extremely unique, because it's the only competition out there which gives us a Mars-like environment, and, it, and which is basically a very harsh environment and very challenging for our rovers uh, to compete, compete in. Uh, when we go to these competitions, we have a set of tasks to accomplish. Uh, one of them is to basically uh, service a, a technical panel, turn knobs, flip switches, uh, and uh, also unscrew regulators and so on. Another one is basically uh, pick up tools and deliver them to specific locations uh, in the desert. Another one is uh, science uh, sampling. We have to pick up uh, various samples, and analyze them, uh, with the various onboard capabilities of our rover. And lastly, uh, we have the uh, terrain traversal, which is basically a very hard stress test for our drive system. Hopefully that gives you an overview of what we have in mind at the very beginning of the year when we start designing uh, these rovers. This year's rover team is, was the largest of mega robotics. And of course, there's a lot of management involved. The whole team itself is broken down into four divisions, mechanical, electrical, and software, and science. And each of these divisions are also broken down into sections so that we have a better communication and flow or work distribution, if you will. So I'm going to hand it up to Duo right here, who was the mechanical division leader uh, on our team last year and who's still a mentor this year with us. All right. Thank you, Oliver. Um, so yeah, I'm, uh, my name is Duo, and I'm the mechanical division lead. So if you were at these talks last year, you might have seen um, our last year's uh, Mars rover, which is Artemis. This year, we have a much different rover. Uh, the name is Boomi, and as you can see, there were a lot of design changes that we've made. So if I were to explain last year's rover, it would, and last year's theme, I guess, it would, be a, it, it would be kind of like a prototype because it was our first year attending competition. We didn't know what we were gonna encounter, the challenges we were gonna face. 
However, coming back from that competition, we learned so much. We had a lot of insights on how we can make this rover better, and that is why uh, we came back and we innovated. So innovation was, was this year's uh, main theme. This is just a complete render of our rover, um, if you can't see really clearly from the, from the, from the front. As you can see, uh, compared to last year's rover, Boomi has a much sleeker looking frame made out of uh, welded steel tubing. The arm uh, is, uh, has a complete different uh, design. It has uh, six degrees of freedom now, and it is completely actuated by uh, uh, motors, which I will show you later. So let's go straight into some of the mechanical components that we've innovated. First, we got the drive system, or the drive units. As you can see, there's, again, a corner, independent corner wheel steering, which we've implemented last year, and which we've brought to this year's design because it was very beneficial. It allows us to do point steering on the spot and gives us great maneuverability. Sure. Also, you can see that uh, on, on the picture here, there's a different set of tracks. So uh, one of our main models is modularity. And it's something that we take full advantage of during competition. So the tracks you see here are actually catered for uh, flat ground, flat terrain. When we need to do rough terrain and climb steep slopes, we change it up into these other sets of tracks. Also, you can notice from the picture here that the motors are now basically completely hidden inside the wheels, giving us uh, maximized clearance under the rover. Some other features now, yeah, so steering configurations you've already seen. We can, what we can also do is, uh, I'll play you a video here, is we can go from six wheel to four wheel very quickly. What this is all allows us to do is during competition, if, if one of our motors encounters uh, some sort of catastrophic failure, it's not the end of competition for us. We can simply uh, change very quickly into a four-wheel conf configuration and still continue uh, performing. And this is actually what happened during this year's URC. One of our, uh, one of our steering motors broke, and we had to uh, quickly change it into a four-wheel uh, configuration to continue the competition. Now, something that we have pushed um, to innovate, I guess, is um, every, every year you see different kinds of suspension, but they all look, um, a lot of them look like um, basically tanks, or uh, they have usually six independent um, systems, and it looks uh, like a spider, and they're all, at, um, uh, the suspension system is uh, usually four bar linkages that are independent. What we do is we try to push the design uh, with what we call the double lambda rocker boogie, which is a slight variation of the standard rocker boogie. Now, what you see here is a standard rocker boogie that we've mounted. But this year at, uh, at comp, and even during testing, we've had a lot of um, testing time with this new kind of suspension. And we've gained a lot of insight on how uh, to make the suspension systems better. And yeah. Now, here is the double lambda rocker boogie suspension in action. Yeah, once again. It's, uh, uh, it, it performs functionally. It seems like it performs very similarly to a standard rocker boogie. However, in, in reality, it actually, um, it actually prevents dangerous overturning moments. Now, the reason why we have this uh, standard rocker boogie uh, system set up readily available is because this kind of design is a lot more simple and it's reliable. So we're doing a lot of testing and prototyping with that kind of design, but we're pushing the boundaries on newer types of suspension system. Now here's just a, a short video of how a four-wheel configuration didn't um, come to uh, our, uh, it, it wasn't very advantageous during the competition. We basically got stuck <laughs> during one of the terrain traversing challenges, and it was uh, difficult for us to get out of this sticky situation. However, 
uh, we can quickly switch into different kind of suspension system like uh, six wheel, which would uh, perform better. Now the bar differential is something that we've uh, had different as well this year. Noticing that last year from uh, a geared differential, there was a lot of backlash. So we changed it into a bar, a bar differential now and it has basically zero backlash. And the way it works is Ultimately, it just transfers part of the motion to the other side, and the body, the body of the rover remains generally, yeah, stable. And that's how the bar differential functions. Now, going, go, finally, going to one of the, the big, big heavy redesigns that we've done this year was the robotic manipulator. Now, as you can see here, it has a, a, a huge range of motion. It has a payload of five kilograms and fully extended, actually. And it could even move all the way to a vertical position. Now, this kind of, this kind of range of motion gives us great dexterity when, um, when doing competition tasks. For example, here's a... Here's a video of us doing the uh, obstacle run. Oops, <laughs> I guess it dropped it. And you can see that not a lot of teams actually attempted to pick this, this, um, this gas tank out, up, but we actually managed to do it because we had very fine control over every single one of our joints. Now, pouring actual fuel into uh, that box was uh, a challenge in itself, but I guess this just shows you how having basically um, brushed DC motors at every joint gives you a much finer degree of dexterity. We even have a harmonic speed reducer at the first joint, which gives us uh, the, the, the necessary torque that we need. The end joint can be spun uh, 360 as much as you want because there's a slip ring on it. And this allows us to turn valves several times and perform many rotations. Okay. And what we've done differently, I guess, this year is uh, we've, we've done not only just design, but we've done heavy, heavy analysis. So what you see here is a video of a simulation of the arm uh, being run with uh, inverse kinematics. Now, this unfortunately hasn't been implemented yet on our robot, but um, as soon as we get the encoders on, uh, this basically is what we'll see next year. It will be able to have encoder feedback, closed loop control, and it can basically, for example, hover over the, the ground on, uh, and not have the, the operator have to uh, perform those tasks. Again, some in-depth analysis that we did was uh, finite element analysis. So we've uh, done a lot of uh, FE on the frame to optimize the weight and stress distribution. Now I'm going to hand it off to Oliver again to talk about science and electrical and the software systems on board. Perfect. Um, just to speed things up a little bit. D, all right. So one last component we don't have on the rover right now was an auger system. So we could basically dr uh, drill into the ground up to 15 centimeters. Why 15 centimeters? Because the competition we're going at uh, at a later time in the year required us to go this deep. Uh, so you can have a, maybe an idea here. So basically it's, a, it's basically a drill bit that's spinning and then we have a system that will lower it slowly. Another highly experimental system we didn't have time to put on the rover or implement on the rover was a spectrometer. These instruments are extremely expensive in normal times, and they basically indicate us or give us an idea of what's the composition of the sample we've collected. Uh, but this one was extremely sensitive to vibrations and couldn't be installed on the rover, unfortunately. So this year we're starting on the second version, uh, working on the second version of this, and uh, hopefully it'll be vibration. Otherwise, it'll be ready to be used as a bench analysis uh, once the rover comes back to the station and when we have to do some further analyses. On the electrical side, we did a, a big push 
Uh, and a big improvement on last year's uh, electrical box. This was on Artemis, our very first rover. It wasn't very pretty. You know, it was a little bit messy. Uh, it worked. It was the first design. But this year, we've totally changed. Uh, everything is much cleaner. We can keep all the drive controls in one section, all the uh, brush DC motor controls for the arm on the other side. We have the, all the interfacing between the main computer, and those are done with our microcontrollers right here. And then we have all the power distribution uh, elements up there. So by keeping everything modular, it's much easier to debug any problem or make quick changes if something breaks. So that's also some, uh, some very high innovation in terms of how we organize our things inside the electrical box. We can basically stack our PCBs and connect everything uh, with ribbon cables uh, and reduce the, the length of the wires required. And one last little touch uh, was to keep the batteries separated from the main electrical enclosure. So whenever we swap in or swap out batteries, uh, we don't damage anything that's in the electrical box. Everything is separated out there. It was super handy and super helpful. A bit more on the situational awareness side. We've been working a lot on trying to detect obstacles around us. And I'm guessing this will, be, this will pay off this year because there's a new component on the upcoming University Rover Challenge, uh, which is an autonomous navigation task. Uh, perfect. So I'll just, uh, also we have an Omnicam system, and this Omnicam system basically uh, is a conical, is a camera pointing up at a conical mirror and gives us a full 360 degree views of our surrounding with one video feed. Also, this is a uh, view of our control station. We usually have cameras to control the rover, and what's very innovative on this one here is that we mostly use cameras on the side aligned with the wheels to drive the rover, and this way we can, whenever there's an obstacle arriving at the horizon, we can, from just by looking at those, we can know if we're clearing the obstacle or not. So, uh, Boomi performed extremely well at the University Rover Challenge, much better than our last year, and we were extremely happy, and we're looking forward to the next year's rover. When we came back to Canada, uh, we had three months to work and modify a little bit Boomi so that it's ready for the European Rover Challenge happening in Poland. And we were able to get all this testing done. We didn't have time to do for the University uh, Rover Challenge in time. And in the end, it paid off. And we won third uh, place internationally, uh, which was a huge, huge accomplishment for us, which we, re we also did last year. So it was the second year in a row and for the first time. Uh, and at this competition, the team was stepping for two years in a row on the podium. So that happened about two weeks ago. So we were extremely happy of ourselves. And it's a good kickstart, and it's very good for the morale of the team to keep pushing and innovating for next year. I'll just pass it on to Duo here. He's going to close everything and uh, basically I'll explain you a little bit what's our plan going forward in the next iteration of the rover. Thank you. So again, innovation was the big theme this year. We chose to innovate a lot of the systems on a Mars rover because that's how we move forward, right? That's how we discover new things, and we were not afraid to push the boundaries. We had in, an innovative arm, um, uh, an innovative uh, Omnicam design that Ali talked about, which we will be improving, and so many, so many other systems, which no other team has ever tried before, but which we are not only trying to implement, but we are actively testing and analyzing and trying to improve it and make it better. So what are we, what are we innovating for next year then? So state-of-the-art suspension system. So this suspension, uh, actually from the video before, you saw that we didn't perform as well on some of the suspension-related terrain traversing tasks. Uh, what we're going to plan to do next year is a complete overhaul of just the suspension system, add uh, more sh shock absorbing, and hopefully uh, make that a lot better. I also mentioned before closed loop control for the robotic manipulator. This will give us much, much better um, control over the arm without control systems, basically. You can only do so much as an operator. And finally, autonomous navigation is what we're going to be gunning for next year. We have a lot of experience set up in place. Our other uh, sister teams for the autonomous underwater vehicle, they have a lot of experience with computer vision. And um, combined with our knowledge of state estimation, we will uh, basically have 
an autonomous navigation system ready for next year. All right, so thank you for listening to our presentation. If you have any questions. <laughs> yes, sir. Do you want me to yeah, talk about that? Right. Yeah, that's a very good question. Uh, it's a, that's a challenge on its own because we're university students and there's always a, a cycle right, going on there. Uh, whenever we recruit at the beginning of every year, we really focus on recruiting very young students, so year zero or year one students, um, so that you know, they have a year or two to learn from the older members. And when these older members graduate, it's time for them to move on and become these uh, pillars for the team for the new recruits and so on. So it's all about the, new, the new recruitment and uh, keeping yeah. them involved, even though they're very young and somewhat unexperienced yet, uh, giving them responsibility. Yeah, handing, handing the baton is very important for us. And we also try to document a lot of our, uh, our things so that uh, future members can read about it. <laughs> yeah, no, definitely. Uh, yeah, uh, as you, yeah, as, as you might know, so yeah, sand is a, a big issue, and um, well, basically the reason why we didn't put any covers this year is because we know the the amount of sand we're getting from one competition alone is not enough to hinder the performance of this these gears. But yes, in the long run, if we are to um, design something for Mars or even for future competitions, if we plan to reuse this system. We do have plans in place to design 3D printed uh, plastic covers for them and basically seal the whole system. <laughs> yeah. Yes, again. Oh. ready to be, you know, so that it's an actual uh, good feed for the user in the end. And ultimately, we'd like to do some uh, feature analysis and feature detection for the navigation tasks for this year. So when the computer's in there, it's going to last about an hour maximum, just enough for what we need. Um, the weight of the rover itself is straight on the 50 kilogram limit. Um, so next year, we'll try to make the rover a little bit more compact, a little bit smaller, uh, and hopefully a little bit lighter. Yes, sir. So I was just working on a uh, quadcopter uh, project at Boeing, and it was really funny because we had some incredibly intelligent people there, but no one knew how to turn a wrench or to drill into a piece of metal. Did you guys come up and have that same problem? I mean, I know you guys are intelligent, but was it unique to you know, do drill stops and all that sort of things? Um, yeah, so. Yeah, build, the technical part is uh, completely different than the theory, and that's one of the knowledge that we try to pass down to our younger generation. Um, us older generation members, we usually have a, a lot of machining experience, um, just hands-on experience, basically. So having them work on a design team, uh, part of that process is definitely to pick up these technical skills, not just um, the theory that you learn in classrooms. Every year, we have tutorials that we get to remember, whether it's mechanical, electrical, or software, whether they're a bit more theoretical. For example, if you want to machine a part, uh, you have to design a specific way, so you have to keep in mind how the machinist will make the part in the end. Same thing for electrical. When you're soldering a wire, there are different ways to do it, and we make sure that we have both some more like lecture-like tutorials, but also very practical tutorials. Yeah. And we keep everything documented. And also, like to add to that, I think hands-on experience is, is crucial for a good design. Some, I've seen some people try to design very cool looking designs. They look great on, in theory, but then someone with machining experience takes a look at that and says, we can't, we can't make that, right? We can't. So <laughs> just having some technical experience will greatly help you have a smarter, better design.
in the end. Yes, sir. Uh, car yes. <laughs> Do you want to talk about it? Um, I'm part of the team this year who's going to be building this section. Uh, it's going to be basically my capsule project for my degree. Uh, before we move on to carbon fiber, for example, for the frame or the suspension, we really want to make sure we nail down all the weight distribution. We okay. exactly know what's going on there because composites are great in terms of weight reduction, but it's a double-sided blade, right? When it fails, it doesn't, it doesn't forget. So we really want to make sure we optimize as much as we can uh, with these materials in the first place, the steel and aluminum, so that once we're really certain of what's going on, once we really understand it truly, um, this year we're not going to go for carbon fiber, maybe for the non-structural elements, maybe for the camera mount and so on, we'll go with that. But I'm looking at uh, using composites. My vision is much more, we'll, be, we'll start to use composites maybe in two years from now. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's, it's a very good point. Yeah, every, every year we have to pick our battles in terms of what design we focus on very much. Uh, a lot of these systems are just being uh, truly tested and understood right now in our second year of the design. So uh, suspension, yeah, definitely something we will be working on in the future. There's so much we can do. Uh, yeah, just to add on to that, uh, the load, the workload behind these rollers is enormous. And we have so much time to design those and test those and make sure they're ready for competition. Uh, we started designing this year's rover much earlier than usual because we want to have as much capital time as we can before going to the University Rover Challenge uh, in early June next year. Uh, so there's so much we can do in, in, in this time. So it's, uh, we, as Du was saying, we've got to choose our battle and make engineering assumptions along the way. Yes, sir. <laughs> we, uh, we got a van. And we drove nine hours. <laughs> uh, drove overnight. Uh, uh, when we stay on the continent, it's not too bad. Uh, for example, when we've been to Utah, we were able to get a cargo brown shipment uh, from Canada. When we've been to Poland a few weeks ago, uh, we got a sponsorship from Air Canada Cargo, who was on Lane Cars there for the end of this year. Uh, they offered us cargo shipping opportunities directly to Poland. So when we flew there, we just had to pick up the cargo and same thing on the way back. So it was Thank you.